You know what? I'm just gonna come right out and say it. Ozempic is the most effective type 2 diabetes medication in the GLP-1 family. It doesn't come with a fancy auto injector that hides the needle for you, but if what you're after is the greatest A1C reduction and the most weight loss available from a GLP-1 medication, Ozempic might be your best choice. Welcome to Sugar High Guys, I'm PA David. I'm a board certified and licensed diabetes PA practicing in Southern California. And Sugar High is your channel to come to for relatable and reliable diabetes information that's always easy to understand. If you're new here, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button because I think that you'll find Sugar High to be a good resource to help you along on your diabetic journey. On today's Sugar High video, we're gonna go into everything surrounding the type two diabetes medication Ozempic. We'll talk about what sets this medication apart from others like it, the side effects, how to inject it, and I'll share some of my own opinions with you about Ozempic itself and its place in managing type two diabetes. So let's get going on this episode of Sugar High. absolute most effective way to manage type 2 diabetes is a healthy lifestyle consisting of a low carbohydrate diet, regular exercise, and weight reduction early on in the course of diabetes. I always encourage my patients to do everything that they can to manage their diabetes, hopefully without medication, to make these drugs unnecessary. But when that's not enough, diabetes medications can be helpful to fill in the gaps. As far as which medications, if any, are right for you, only you and your own healthcare provider can cooperatively determine that. This video is intended as general information only, so please don't start or stop any medication without first consulting your own healthcare provider. This video is not sponsored by the manufacturer of Ozempic, and I don't get any kind of compensation for talking about it here. Everything I say in this video is based on my own clinical experience, clinical trial facts, and my honest opinion about where Ozempic falls in the management of type 2 diabetes. Ozempic is the newest injected medication in a larger class of type 2 diabetes medications called GLP-1 agonists, or just GLP-1s for short. Now, as far as what that means, I've talked a lot about what the GLP-1 hormone is and what it does in normal glucose management in several of my other videos, especially in this general overview of GLP-1 medications right here. But just in case you're new to Sugar High and you haven't heard that yet, GLP-1 is a naturally produced hormone that your intestine releases after eating that stimulates the pancreas to release insulin so that you can manage the glucose from that meal. It tells your brain to feel less hungry so that we know when it's time to stop eating. It keeps the liver from overproducing glucose and it slows down how quickly the stomach digests food and sends it into the intestine for absorption. Since the effect of GLP-1 and other hormones in that incretin system become weaker with type 2 diabetes, the hope is that adding more GLP-1 to the system will restore some of that effect. Now, there are a bunch of different medications in this family, most of which have or will soon have their own full reviews right here on Sugar High. So what's the big deal with Ozempic that made it worth developing when there were already so many options that came before it? Well, the simple and straight up answer to that question is that it's better than the others. And that's not just my opinion. There have been several clinical trials conducted that tested Ozempic compared to Victoza, to Bidurion, and to Trulicity. And in each one of those clinical trials, Ozempic lowered A1C more than the other medication. Now, don't get me wrong, there's not a huge difference between Ozempic and the other medications in the GLP-1 class, but the difference was statistically significant. Let me give you some idea what I'm talking about. When they compared Ozempic to Trulicity, Trulicity dropped A1C by an average of 1.3 points compared to an average of 1.6 points with Ozempic. In another study, people using Bidurion got an average A1C reduction of 0.9 points, while those taking Ozempic got a 1.5% point drop. And when they compared it to Victoza, Ozempic reduced A1C by an average of 1.7 points compared to one point in Victoza. Although admittedly, that Victoza study might not be a really fair comparison because they used the maximum dose of Ozempic against only the middle dose of Victoza. There was even a clinical trial that compared Ozempic to Lantus, the most commonly used long-acting basal insulin. Insulin is considered the most powerful weapon that we have to lower blood glucose. And in that study, 
People using Ozempic saw an average A1C drop of 1.5 points compared to 0.9 points in people given Lantus. And I'll be honest, that surprised me. As far as weight loss, people using Trulicity lost an average of about 6 pounds compared to almost 13 pounds of weight loss with Ozempic. When they compared it to Bidurion, people taking Bidurion lost an average of about 4 pounds compared to over 12 pounds with Ozempic. And when they compared it to Victoza, people taking Victoza lost just over 4 pounds compared to 13 pounds almost with Ozempic. Again, max dose Ozempic versus middle dose of Victoza. They obviously did not ask my opinion before designing that study. Another really nice benefit that Ozempic has over other certain types of diabetes medications, including some in this same class, is that it's been shown to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. Like all new type 2 diabetes medications, Ozempic was required to be tested in a dedicated clinical trial to prove that it doesn't raise the risk of heart disease. And in that study, they actually found that it reduced the risk by 26%. And this is important because the risk of things like cardiovascular death, heart attacks, and strokes are so much higher in people with type 2 diabetes that we need to do everything we can to try to reduce the risk of people experiencing one of those events. Ozempic is available in three different doses in two different injector pens. The starting dose is 0.25 milligrams per week, but 0.25 milligrams is not considered an effective treatment dose. This is just a small introductory dose to let your body get used to the medication so that the side effects aren't so bad. So we don't normally keep people at that 0.25 milligram dose. After four weeks, we usually increase the dose all the way up to 0.5 milligrams once a week, since that dose is much more effective at lowering your A1C. And you'll know the pen that delivers these two smaller injections because the label has a red sticker on it. If 0.5 milligrams is not enough to get you to your A1C goal, and if your side effects are manageable, your healthcare provider may choose to increase your dose to one milligram once a week, which is the maximum dose. But in order to get one milligram without having to do two different injections with this pen, there's a larger pen that's specifically designed to give that one milligram dose. And instead of a red sticker on the label, that pen has a bluish green sticker. So it's kind of nice because the color coding can help you to keep track of which dose you're on. The device is just a standard insulin style injector pen. In fact, it's the same pen that both Traceba and Levomir come in since both of these insulins are made by the same company that makes Ozempic but the color of the pen is different. So if you see that light blue on it, you'll know that it's Ozempic and hopefully not accidentally mix it up for insulin if you happen to be using both. Unlike insulin though, Ozempic comes packaged with the pen needles that you need to inject it. Since you only really need one needle per week, they don't make you go out and get a separate prescription and pay a separate copay for the needles, so they're just included in the box. So that's kind of cool. The procedure for giving yourself a dose of Ozempic is pretty much the same as using a standard insulin style pen. You just attach a needle, dial the dose, insert it, and then press this button. Like most of these medications, the FDA approved injection locations are on the back of your arm, the abdomen, or the front of your thigh. To be honest, it doesn't really matter all that much where you inject it so long as it goes into the fat instead of the muscle. And I mean, the needle that comes with these things are so short that anyone it would have a really tough time getting it deep enough to reach the muscle. Anyway, these needles are barely long enough to get through the skin. So let's take a look at how to use Ozempic. We got Kevin here and he helps us with all our injection demonstrations. So let's check this out. So the first step before giving any kind of injected medication is to make sure your skin is clean. A lot of people like to use alcohol swabs and that's fine, but some people like just regular old soap and water. Both of them work just fine, but do make sure that your skin is clean before injecting so that you don't risk getting a skin infection. The next thing we need to do is attach one of these single use needles. Ozempic is a bit different from some of the others in its class. If you've seen the Trulicity or Bidurion get used, those pens give just one dose and then you throw them away. One Ozempic pen holds an entire month's worth of medication here in the reservoir, so we need to attach a new needle each time. The medication will include the needles in the packaging so you don't have to go out and get extra, and there's a little paper that you peel off and then it's as simple as just screwing it down until it's tight. If you can still move it, it's not done, make sure it's all the way down to where you can't twist it anymore. 
So now we need to dial up the dose, and that seems like an easy enough idea, but I've actually seen a few people get confused by this. If you've ever seen a typical insulin style injector pen, you'll notice that the dial turns the same way, but each individual click of the dial brings you to a specific dose with the dose counters like counting up by two, four, six, eight, and so on. And when you turn the dial on an Ozempic pen, you're not gonna see any numbers right away. You notice that there's a bunch of lines that sort of move to the left as you turn. The idea is that you're gonna keep turning until you get to this 0.25. That's your starter dose. If you keep turning, you're gonna get those lines again, and as they get all the way to the left again, we'll eventually get to the 0.5 milligram, which is the standard maintenance dose. And on this pen, that's as far as it'll go. The confusion that I've seen patients experience is when they wanted to start turning, they expected to see numbers right away, and that line threw them off. I actually had one patient that I had increased his dose up to one milligram because his glucose was still too high. And then when it didn't get any better, I asked him to show me how he was using his medication. Turns out that he thought that was a one and he thought that meant one milligram, so he never turned it any farther than that. So when he injected it, he was actually really getting like almost no medication at all. And I can understand that mistake because this line does sort of look like a one, doesn't it? I think it would have been smarter if they would have printed little arrows pointing down to suggest that you need to keep turning until you get to that 0.25. But hey, I'm not in charge, right? So let's go ahead and dial this up to 0.25, since if you're watching this, to get ready to use your Ozempic for the first time, 0.25 is the dose that you'll be on. We don't have to shake this thing up or mix it or anything before injection. All we gotta do is remove the cap. But when you pull the cap off, you're gonna notice that there's a second smaller cap underneath. So just pull that guy straight off as well, and there's your needle. And you can see how small that needle is. You probably can barely even see it. Ozempic does not have an auto injector like some other meds in this class, but what it does have is the smallest needle of any other GLP-1 medication. That there is a 32 gauge needle, which is literally about the thickness of a hair on a horse's tail. Compare that to the 23 gauge needle that's in the Bidurion pen, and you'll see that it really is a very small needle. You can hold the pen however you want. Some people like holding it like this with their fingers and then press with their index finger. Some people like holding it with their fist and press with their thumb. Doesn't really matter. Either way, the key to putting the needle in is that you want it to be just one smooth, even movement. Doesn't have to be lightning fast, but going in smoothly and consistently makes all the difference in the world as far as whether you're gonna feel anything or not. So just go right in there. The needle is so short that you honestly cannot go too deep. If you hesitate and go in really slowly, that's the only way you're really gonna feel anything that resembles pain. If it's one smooth motion, you aren't going to feel this. What we're gonna do now is press and hold the button. And you'll notice that as I pressed and held the button, it counted back down to zero. It made a series of clicks and now it's on zero. And hold it for about five seconds once you see that zero, and then just pull the needle straight out. That is all there is to it. What you don't wanna do is put the needle in and then just press the button and let go really quick. Because look, let me dial it up again and show you. If I dial it up to 0.25 and I put that back, normally we wouldn't reuse our needles, but Kevin's not alive, so he doesn't care. So we put the needle back in nice and smooth. If I press and let go, look, I didn't get the whole dose in there. So you need to press and hold it all the way down until you get to zero again, then count to five just to let it soak in and then pull it out. All that we need to do at this point is put the cap back on and then unscrew the needle and then save the rest for tomorrow. Whoa, did I just say tomorrow? I'm sorry guys, I misspoke. I meant next week. This is not injected every day. This is a once weekly medication. All right, back to the show. This needle can go in a sharps container that you can get from your pharmacy, and that's it, you're done. You can keep this at room temperature until your next injection. Unopened pens should be kept in the fridge, but once you open it up, it's actually good at room temperature for a month. If ever you have a pen that won't turn all the way to the full dose, see how it stops right there? That means that this is empty. Look, the plunger is all the way up and there's not enough to deliver full dose. So it will not let you dial past what it's able to actually deliver. So this is done, this is trash. So there's your Ozempic dosing tutorial. Thank you very much, Kevin, love you so much. As effective as Ozempic may be in reducing A1C and weight reduction, all medications have possible good and possible bad, right? So let's talk about the possible side effects and warnings associated with Ozempic. Being a GLP-1 medication, Ozempic has that standard FDA black box warning about medullary thyroid cancer and multiple endocrine neoplasia too. 
If you want to know more about that, I'd recommend checking out this video where I cover the whole story about this warning. But just to summarize, the thyroid of a rat is very different than the thyroid of a human. And in animal studies, rodents tended to develop this rare type of thyroid cancer rather frequently. There's been no evidence that there's any link between these medications and thyroid cancer in humans, but the FDA warns against using this med just in case if you happen to have medullary thyroid cancer, the most rare type of th thyroid cancer in humans. This does not apply to the more common types of thyroid cancer like papillary or follicular thyroid cancer. If you read the package insert with all the warnings, you might notice one about diabetic retinopathy. This one is specific to Ozempic. A lot of the other medications in this class don't have this warning. Now, this does not mean that Ozempic is going to take someone with normal eyes and give them diabetic retinopathy. But in one clinical trial, they found that people who have pre-existing proliferative diabetic retinopathy tended to get a little worse when they used Ozempic during the study. Now that's not a direct side effect of Ozempic. That's a side effect of rapid improvement in glucose control, whether it's using Ozempic or insulin or any other type of diabetes medication that rapidly improves your sugar. Even before the study, we had known that if somebody has pre-existing diabetic retinopathy and if their A1C is really high, it's better if we pace ourselves as we bring them back down to the target A1C, as opposed to rapidly bringing them down because that rapid reduction in A1C for some reason seems to speed up progression of retinopathy. When they started that study, I don't think that anybody expected that Ozempic was gonna be bringing down the A1C as quickly and robustly as it did. So moving forward, they excluded people with pre-existing proliferative retinopathy from future studies in order to avoid this exact problem. So if you have retinopathy, it's not like you can't take this medication, but we just wanna pace ourselves as far as how quickly we raise your dose and how quickly we reduce your glucose. And even so, this phenomenon isn't particularly all that common. But you know what is pretty common is gastrointestinal side effects like nausea, vomiting, decreased appetite, and diarrhea. If you get side effects from Ozempic, it's probably gonna be one of those. In clinical trials, the frequency of these side effects is pretty similar to the other medications in the same family, with the one exception of Bicdurion, which tends to cause it much less frequently. Let's take a look at some of the more common side effects. If we start with nausea, you can see that with one exception, most of these medications cause nausea in about 20% of people who use them. And Ozempic is no exception. Diarrhea happens in about 10 or 12% of people taking these medications, but it's actually slightly less with Ozempic with only Bidurion being lower. It's about on par with the others for vomiting, right around 9%, again, only with Bidurion being lower. Okay, now, even though the clinical trial data suggests that the side effects are about the same as others in this class, just between you and me, in my clinical experience, it seems like they tend to happen a bit more frequently with Ozempic than with the others, at least for nausea, I've noticed this. Now again, this is just my own personal observation, so take this with a grain of salt. But I have had a lot of experience with this medication. And that leads me to the last part of this video where we discuss my own personal opinion on Ozempic. We covered the facts, now the rest of this is just my own thoughts. From a diabetes management standpoint, I'm not gonna lie, Ozempic is my favorite option in the GLP-1 class of type two diabetes medications. I think that the fact that it gives the greatest amount of A1C reduction, the most amount of weight loss, and the cardiovascular risk reduction, it just makes it too good of an option to pass up if it's available. Of course, it's not for everyone, no medication is. Some people just can't handle the side effects, and if they need to use another medication in this class, that is totally okay. Because, don't get me wrong, while Ozempic might be my favorite, it doesn't mean that the other medications are garbage. Most of the other medications in this family offer a lot of the same benefits, even if not quite as much A1C reduction or not quite as much weight loss. It's like the difference between a Ferrari and a Lamborghini. You might have a preference between one or the other, but if you had to settle for your second choice, you're still getting an incredible car and no one should be mad about that. The biggest downside of Ozempic, in my opinion, is the cost. This is one of the most expensive diabetes medications out there. And being so expensive, a lot of insurance companies just don't want to pay for it. And a lot of my patients don't have access to it. And if you have to buy your medications cash, 
forget it, nobody's gonna pay $800 a month for a diabetes medication. I've heard from a lot of my subscribers in other countries outside of the United States that on some national health plans it's available and on some it's not. But for those who do have access to it, I think Ozempic is a really great option when a really solid diet and a healthy lifestyle is not quite getting your A1C where it ought to be. So there's your full review on Ozempic. I'm hopeful that this has prepared you if you're getting ready to use Ozempic for the first time and that you have a good idea about what to expect if you're getting started. If you've tried Ozempic in the past, I'd love to hear about what your experiences were. I'm willing to bet that just like every medication in the world, some of you might have loved it and some of you might have hated it. Tell me about your experiences in the comments or if you have other questions. If there's something I left out, let me know and I'll do my best to reply. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up and make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell so that you can continue to get new diabetes videos from Sugar High as they become available. I'll plan on seeing you in the next video.